As you guys know, um, for those of you that are not aware, spoiler alert for anybody in the chat about US, UFC 292. But Sugar Sean O'Malley was able to defeat Aljamain Sterling in the main event, the title fight. And um, yeah, impressive performance. I think personally, I was very surprised at the knockout from Sugar Sean O'Malley, mostly because of how tentative the, start, the, the fight started. It kind of reminded me of like, it kind of reminded me of Tyrone Woodley versus Stephen Boy Wonder Top um, Wonder Boy Stephen Thompson, whatever his name. Hey, he said Wonder Boy, right? Do you remember that fight? Um, Tyrone Woodley versus Wonder Boy. It was very tentative, very tense. Both people were trying to kind of catch each other on a counter, and I felt like first round went like that way. So that's why I was surprised when the second round, fucking Aljamain Sterling came out of the fucking corner like super fast super aggressive first round don't get me wrong he was still backing up um sugar sean to the fucking cage but he was very patient and so was sugar sean but second round it changed and then sugar sean obviously caught him and he was coming in he overextended and he knocked him out so i think before the fight i thought it was gonna go decision i have to be honest i, I know i don't do fight prediction i don't talk about cards too much but i honestly thought it would go decision and i thought aljamain sterling would win on decision mostly because of his grappling and his wrestling he'd have more ground control he'd have more time on the floor you know choke you're trying to attempt a choke doing whatever grounding and pounding but sugar sean will obviously have the advantage with the striking on the feet but i would thought it would go the distance that's my honest opinion so I was surprised when the second round that happened. But I would never sit here and say, I thought Aljamain Sterling was going to smoke Sugar. I thought Sugar was going to smoke Aljamain Sterling. I would have never said that because I think they're both at that kind of level where they're both dangerous. I feel like nowadays in the UFC, I think you guys would agree, the days of like you being a good grappler, a good wrestler, a good jiu-jitsu jiu practitioner and just walking up to somebody and grabbing them, and then doing what you want to do, it doesn't exist anymore. The strikers are too high level. So if you do want to come close to somebody that isn't maybe a good grappler, you have to know you're going to get fucking punched in the face. You already see what Israel Adesanya does to people. We see what someone like a Sugar Sean does to people. You just can't, you know, rush guys anymore. You have to either have a really good chin, like Khabib had. Khabib would get hit a lot when he was rushing people. But, you know, his takedowns were fucking timed perfect into perfection. But, you know, you have to kind of risk having a really good chin. Or you just have to kind of have elite, you know, ability to kind of get within range to get somebody and then kind of, you know, take them down and whatnot. So I didn't think this was all going to go one way. Anyway, walking it all back. It's funny because even though I say that, right, Brendan had a very interesting and peculiar <laughs> way of maybe addressing the fight and maybe his predictions that I feel like is going to make him look incredibly dumb, which he shouldn't do. But again, it's another kind of illustration of just how i don't know i don't know if it's lazy or just how much he doesn't care about the ufc or something like that but it's something in between because i feel like most sensible people who'd watch a tape on sugar who'd watch tape on aljermaine sterling would never walk into his fight thinking one or the other is going to get smoked i don't think so i think it'd be a tight fight it'd go to decision maybe sugar would you know edge it or maybe damage or something or whatever or highlight moments or knockdowns but i never thought it would be like super one-sided anyway brendan had different opinions so i've got these clips from the final kid reddit that give you an idea on where brendan stood on the fight and obviously how he's probably going to be feeling now because brendan's predictions are awful this is one clip called um yeah let's just play it i don't want to fucking read the shamanism but let's kind of play this clip this is fucking incredible all of these clips are fucking great actually let's play all of them uh, prelim Pedro is an option. Dominic Cruz could be still an option. Um, I just I don't think Cody's an option right now, just because it's just low risk, low or high high risk, low reward. And I, I heard you say, because I, I love both you and Cody, so I don't want you guys I to like fight. I don't have to pick because I, I love both you yeah. guys. I, I love Dustin. I oh, love him. Man. No, you didn't. But I guess no, I love him. I just I've never to, I have to I keep love. things exciting, oh, and I gotta. Man. There's nobody better. In the history of the UFC, that once they get your back and uh, you know strangle you unconscious with a rear naked choke, that's where Aljo excel, you know, excels there. I do think um, again he's a bad matchup for everybody. It's, it's not a knock on uh, Sugar. Uh, so obviously he went back on everything that he said right and he betted on somebody that he likes because he said he likes sugar but then he betted against him in this fight the funny thing about it what he said about choke people i'm just thinking about it now do you guys remember if i'm not mistaken 
the Aljamain Sterling fight where he choked out um, um what's his name uh where he choked out um uh Corey Sanderhagen right if I'm not mistaken did, wasn't that a mistake didn't Corey Sanderhagen overextend didn't he go for like some sort of like spinning back kick or something missed it and then think he jumped on his back and then the rest was history am I not mistaken so if I, if if that if that's true that obviously proves that the highest levels it's just a mis it's just mistakes if you make a mistake people are so good now they can capitalize on it and your lights will be turned off Aljamain Sterling when made one mistake overextended and then got punched if you watch the replays actually there's replays you see of Aljamain Sterling overextending realizing he did and knowing the punch is going to come in and close his eyes that's how he you could tell in that moment he no he knew he fucked up he's like fuck and he, and he got caught so for Brendan to be so certain on who's going to win or not is insane because we got to do is watch a couple of their fights and you can clearly see they're both on a really high level. But obviously, sometimes they have a tendency to make mistakes, you know, like it's just not it, it just is what it is. And sometimes they get punished. So I feel like if if, if Sugar did, did, if Sugar was patient and didn't make a mistake, he he would probably would have found that you know, a lot of range and would, would be able to come in range and hit and hit fucking Aljo with the jab, hit him with a cross, whatever, or hooks. And it probably would be up to Aljo to make sure he can weather those storms and then get a hold of him. But it's just, this, I think Brendan, the issue he has with these predictions, it's just a certainty with no knowledge, with no expertise, with no base. How can he be that confident when you haven't even watched the tape? Like, I don't understand this, but anyway, um, let's continue. And I'll get the other clips up as well. I saw a question here. Let me roll up. So sorry. Um, oh, big up Henry, um, uh, Robert Henry Poet. Big up you, brother. Appreciate you being here. What is today? It says, all of these reaction such advice channels being demonetized bring up the modern day online question. It, um, if you still, are you still willing to give your hot takes slash opinions if nobody's paying you? That's a good point. I think a lot of these people don't. I think that's what goes to be said about these podcasts and these guys and the whole, you know, the whole cast media shit going under and shit. Clearly a lot of these guys, and that's why the grift comes in, you're only in it with the grift because the grift makes you money. Being controversial, being contrarian, being right-wing, whatever it may be, it's, it kind of brings a lot of negative attention, but any attention is good online because it can sometimes bring you dollars. And there's always a disenfranchised group of people on the internet who feel like the liberal progressive agenda is being pushed too much. They feel like they've been ostracized. They have a platform to speak too freely. So when you speak for them, they kind of look at you as sort of like a, um, a not even a martyr, like a leader or something of whatever it may be. Right? They kind of, kind of, they kind of live vicariously through you, so they support you. But I also think if you actually are about that life, it shouldn't matter the money you get really and truly because you're talking about things that are impacting people in real life you're talking about politics policies um you know societal things like you should be you should be um it should be enough that you have a platform to speak and touch people that you can get your message out there so people can maybe enact the change that they need to do in their local governments and their local communities you shouldn't really care about the money but again that's me being a little bit too what's that thing called optimistic about these people you know most of them are only in it for the p let's just be real about that it kind of is what it is you know what i mean if tim paul wasn't getting the, the donations he was getting in the super chats do you think he'd be on the stream with a woolly hat talking for fucking 17 hours not happening so um let's call it as it is um next clip again another one of brendan talking shit but big up henry Poe. appreciate you brother let's talk another one uh papa has a, papa might as well have a be a new nicknames a streak both of this inconsistency incorrect fight picks and the condition of his underwear so let's play this clip again this was funny you know i i think if sugar brings his a game aljo brings his a game aljo's gonna win that fight but it's important to remember one thing you're wrong Here's why. Early round two. Sterling oh, 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 We can't play that. I don't want to get cancelled by fucking MMA YouTube and shit or whatever. But that was fucking hilarious. Let's play that one more time for the just the beginning part. I don't want to fucking get fucking taken off because, you know, UFC don't play when you play their fucking content. But let's just play the beginning one more time. That was fucking brilliant. You're wrong. You know, I, I think if Sugar brings his A game, Aljo brings his A game, Aljo's going to win that fight. But it's important to remember one thing. You're wrong. Here's why. Early round two. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to play too much of it. I don't want to get fucking taken off this fucking platform. But you see there, he gets pummeled. And at the end, what happens at the end? What's the video at the end? Any more clips here? Or is that it? That's it. Cool. But yeah, you see what happens, isn't it? You know what happened there. Um, 
Boom, boom. Let's continue here. One more clip from this. Um, Marty Moose says, U UFC uploaded a fight to their YouTube channel. Would they still flag? Yeah, of course they would, Marty Moose. Remember what happened to me when I tried to watch Matt Reif's YouTube comedy special on here? Do you guys remember that? My channel nearly got fucking completely obliter obliterated. <laughs> I swear to God, it got nearly nuked the whole entire channel when I tried to watch Matt Reif's comedy special on here. So let's not, let's not be, let's not, you know, it, it technically I should, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to test it. I'm too, much, I'm too small for it. Okay. <laughs> this channel allows me <laughs> to fucking, you know, allows me to kind of, you know, to have my DoorDash orders and my UB East orders. I don't want to lose those shekels. Let's just leave it like that. Okay. Let's leave it. Um, Let's play another one. Um, how does he always lose? I love these fucking clips, man, that they have on the Friday Kids sub of all these fucking moments. Let's see this one. How does he lose? Card. On these, uh, Give me your picks, dude. I'm, I'm going Sean O'Malley. I think Sean's bet? got that. Do you want to bet? What? You and all that stuff. That being said, you want to bet on it. Huh? You want to bet on it. I'll bet you. It, again, it's not a bad bet at all. You want to bet a thousand dollars? Sure. How much you want to bet Brett Brian never gets that money? How much you want to bet Brian Callen never gets that thousand dollars? How much? How, how about I don't owe you if it goes to the decision? Because it's not fair. Like it's a, almost a minus four hundred. So if we get, if Aljo wins by decision, then it's just we don't owe each other money. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> So, um, again, absolutely hilarious situation here. Absolutely fucking hilarious. Consistently, Brendan Schaub gets his predictions for UFC fight cards always drastically, crazily wrong. And it's just, it, again, I think most of it is just laziness. He doesn't have the, no, it's, I don't know. Let's walk that back. I don't think it's laziness. To be fair to Brendan, I don't think it's laziness. I think what happened, Brendan kind of left the UFC with a bad taste in his mouth. Obviously, the Joe Rogan conversation, but he kind of felt a little bit, you know, he kind of felt a little bit fucked over by the UFC. Dana White with a Reebok deal, maybe some of his matchups and shit, the relationship he had with Dana White, obviously not being great, and they went back and forth on social. He's always had a bit of a bad taste in his mouth about the UFC. So maybe that bad taste in the mouth about the UFC has always kind of been with him now to the point where now he can't shake it and he's never really you know been able to kind of fully go back in love with the UFC even as a spectator or as like a kind of commentator because he still has all that kind of PTSD from the times of him being the UFC maybe <laughs> Uche, the bad taste in his mouth is dig juice okay <laughs> okay that's bad <laughs> bad taste in mouth. What about how he's cheating? No, 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 no. That's all that fig boy dig juice. You know what I mean? That that fig boy dig juice nectar. Oh, you guys are fucking hilarious. Anyway. 